Thank you very much. Coming back to the digital life, it was beautiful to listen to this very nice music. And we are humans and emotional, of course. So our senses are very uh, sensitive, you know, concerning such a nice uh, life, our real life. But coming back to the, uh, to the discussion of today, um, what is uh, virtual reality and uh, what is going on in our digital life? I mean, di the digitalization is changing our life completely and also our understanding of reality. And because the virtual reality is the technology where humans are attracted and involved in real time, human senses are attracted and involved in real time, the big question is which is the role of humans in future? And my answer is to reconquer human, the people, back to the, their talents to be resourceful instead to be just to be human resources. Well, uh, let us talk about three um, topics. Uh, now, why do we talk now about virtual reality as something very important uh, in the life uh, of digitalization? What is exactly virtual reality and what is going on, which is the next step? And how do we approach this topic? The first one is that uh, we are living really in a very complex uh, time, a very exciting but very complex time, that our experiences, our uh, understanding of reality is changing completely. Our um, world is getting uh, um, uncertain, uh, ambiguous, complex. And uh, what is really um, um, influencing us today is uh, uh, the different changes in different aspects in the economy, in the climate, uh, in, the, uh, in the digitalization. We already uh, listened to talk about artificial intelligence, of course, the politics. Things are connected. They are influencing each other. That means our approach is how to capture these uh, interrelationships to understand better what is going on. And of course, to predict future. And the changes are accelerating faster, higher, farther. But where to go? Where to go? Who, is, who, who will show us the way for the future? Probably one of the good uh, approaches uh, is to remember what, uh, what uh, um, happened in the human history 600 years ago. Um, the Oxford philosopher and economist, uh, um, Jan Gold, uh, Goldin, uh, wrote a very good book uh, about uh, the Second Renaissance. We're living in a time of Second Renaissance, and uh, talking about the First Renaissance, there are many important uh, things to talk, but uh, I selected just two very back-through uh, back ideas, very, very, very back-through um, uh, activities, you know, who influenced our, our life now. The first one was that uh, the people, they found the the way back to the real life, um, discovering, capturing the real life in science, in architecture, and in art. Today, we live in the uh, 600 year, years later, we live also in such kind of changes where people come back to their um, talents, to their abilities to deal with uh, simulation, with uh, digital models, to shape, to capture new reality, new future, which is more, you know, uh, switching to the digital, digital world, which is not the physical reality, but something more, some kind of expanding reality. The second breakthrough idea was the knowledge expansion uh, in the 15th century through the, uh, through the printing process uh, by Gutenberg. So, for the first time, it was possible to distribute knowledge over physical boundaries and boundaries of time. What we, live, what we see today is a knowledge expansion through using, using internet and other media, then physical and time border dissonances, then the realities, they, 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 uh, they merge. Uh, and uh, we really um, um, do not see exactly where is, the, where is the transition from one reality to another reality, from the physical to non-physical reality. So this uh, brings us to the idea to ask, 
what is exactly virtual reality and how to approach the virtual reality. I mean, virtual reality is not what we just read in the internet and see in the, um, uh, in the media. It's not just the so-called virtual reality glasses. They are not glasses. They are just uh, head-mounted displays. Uh, we are not talking really about the technology. Please leave this, uh, this out of discussion. We're talking about what is exactly the technology, what, which is the potential of this technology. And uh, this pot potential leads us really to create a non-physical reality in a logical way, in a way we can simulate and uh, examine it, we can trust this reality and behave like humans in, a, in the individual way. And uh, um, this is not, as I said, just technology, because this technology exists in 60 years. So with what we see today is a little bit mo modified of the technology we, uh, we now since uh, the mid of 80s, 90, 1985. So uh, we are talking about uh, um, the way of creating uh, um, the possibility to see our thoughts, to see our ideas, uh, uh, imaginations um, in a virtual world, to be able to know them. Therefore, the, the virtual reality since at least since 2016 is a hype. It's a hype because uh, this reality allows individual per uh, people to enter in artificial worlds. Okay, this is the, the possibility which the technology gives us and the methodology. The question is, what do you, what do, you do with these possibilities? How to put this technology working uh, in the praxis? What is very important to understand is one fact. I already mentioned that uh, the virtual reality is a reality where individual people look on the reality on, from their personal perspective. This is not the total, the general perspective, it's their one perspective. Therefore, it's very important to talk that, you know, we people will feel in different situations in a different way. Um, we also play different roles and uh, take different uh, identi identities. So I call this uh, uh, human polymorphism. Polymorphism is a term from the uh, computer science, but that means we have also to take into consideration that we humans change our behavior in this reality. And this is uh, very, uh, very important to uh, cover through the methodologies we are using. For example, to, co to consider the virtual reality not just as a visualization, way of visualization, but it's a way of perception, perception with all senses. With, uh, we, we touch, we smell, and uh, in, in addition, we uh, switch on our brain, participating in this process of perception. That means the brain is a, a way to perform my, my mind processing uh, very individually. So how to implement such reality? I can talk a long time about this, <laughs> so now it's uh, my um, topic of research, but I will reduce the explanation just to uh, some important, uh, um, um, important uh, uh, phenomena. The first one is um, that uh, the virtual reality has the basics in the cyberization, the cybernetic model of communication of humans with computers or, or machines. The first idea uh, about the cyberization was given by uh, Norbert Wiener in 1949, and we are already using this uh, cyberization of environment, of reality, for example, in the, on the right side, you see an example of our research on, um, on um, analy analyzing emotions in virtual reality, emotions of people related to physically non-existing uh, artifacts. So the most important in this model is just to capture the connectivity. As I said before, to understand the complex changes in our world, in the world around, around us, is to understand the interrelationships. And this is the possibility exactly to simulate this type of interrelations at any moment, because virtual reality means interaction in real time, like in our physical reality. Then. Um, to understand how virtual reality works, let us look on these three worlds where we are living. We live in a physical world, we enjoy the physical world. There is a digital world where uh, we communicate uh, with, through digital data and information. And the third world is our mental work. This is the work of our dreams, of our ideas, of our understanding, what we have not put 
uh, still put on a paper or uh, um, explain it in a term of digits. These three worlds can work very well and they have a, a huge potential for the future if they are interrelated. So that means the first interrelation is physical to logical connection. That means logical is the digital world because the data are represented uh, uh, in a mathematical way. So converting analog signals into, into digits, we create codes. And these codes allow us to store these codes, to generate data, information, and knowledge, and to use them for many purposes. We are very powerful in the digital world because we can simulate, we can analyze, we can algorithm, uh, algorithmize this, uh, this world. So we had already the topic about artificial intelligence for autonomous driving, for simulation autonomous driving. But this is just the link between uh, physical world and digital world. And where is the human? Where is the resource for human? The resource for human plays a really important role where he is related, inter interrela interrelated in this world through his cognition. Then if the, he is in, inside in this way, he's going inside this world, they can, his, he can switch on his emotions, here understanding, experience, here experiencing this world. And this is phenomenal. This is the way how we can really manage the, the complexity in the future. So um, how to realize such, um, such a triangle, such, such a triad of worlds where human behave, human work? One possibility is uh, the, to realize virtual, to, to create virtual twins. So probably you already heard the term digital virtual twin. Uh, I, um, I um, use this uh, um, topic to uh, teach my students. And you see an example of a student project called virtual twin of a milling machine, where uh, the students create a, a model which is first produced on a milling machine, which is uh, simulated in virtual reality in a cave. And if the model is uh, running well, then um, the virtual machine switch on, switch on the real machine and produces exactly the same what the virtual machine has produced. So you see exactly the example of linking the three worlds where we behave. From one side, the physical world of equipment, of hardware, the digital world where the twins are created and the mental world where the human interacts uh, um, um, with and uh, um, you know, um, use his uh, cognition uh, process. Because the time is very limited, I, uh, will, uh, um, I will give you just a few other examples, but if you are interested, we can talk about this very hot topic. Um, for example, how to use virtual twins for commissioning, for industrial purposes. Uh, how to, um, to perform prediction um, of machines. Uh, how to prepare um, workers, you know, to do everything right in the first time. These are examples of our current research of uh, virtualizing whole factories and running virtual processes. Uh, and this helps a lot to minimize uh, um, uh, mistakes and also to teach people doing, uh, um, you know, working in such environment. Or uh, qualifying with virtual twins. We work in a special programs for virtual, for education and virtual reality and for qualification, not only of students, but uh, also of, uh, of workers or people, uh, you know, ready uh, in, the, uh, in the industry, um, in sense to um, help them to adapt very fast to these changes and to be able to work in a productive way. I think that the time to change is now. So we have not only to wait and to talk about changes, but to act in, uh, for changes. And uh, what is important uh, to, re to repeat again is to push the creativity, the inspiration of the people, because changes can be done if people are strongly motivated and also willing to do it just the first time. So you see just example of our, uh, our um, research and education. We are not just talking using slides or words. We just implement our ideas in fast way. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, as I will love you now to discuss with you later. Thank you.